When you first open up the charts and try and identify where you can take trades, it can end up being a complete overwhelming mess. There's supports everywhere, resistance is everywhere, and in the end your charts look like this, and you take trades that look like this and like this. It's very easy to overcomplicate how the market moves, but today I'm gonna be simplifying how I identify key levels in the market using very basic market structure and price action, and how you can use those levels to try and identify high probability trades avoid fake outs and take strong volume setups. Stick around to the end, like and subscribe if you guys enjoy. Feel free to ask any questions. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna be breaking down GJ for the upcoming week or upcoming Monday. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how I would come to the charts, plan my session and try and identify if price breaks above or below this level, we have a very good chance of finding that high probability trade where we can have some confidence entering instead of guessing where we best want to enter trades. Now, there's a few things we need to think about. And the first one is clean range. Okay. And this is very important. It's also very simple. All we want to try and identify when we think about clean range is where price has the least amount of obstruction. So the market moves like this. We have a push at exhaustion. We consolidate, maybe come down and then we push again. And then we do the same. We maybe come down, maybe reverse. And we have these little areas in the market where we have clean range. Okay. And that's what I mean when I refer to clean range, it's areas in the market where there's no resistances and supports everywhere. And price has a good chance of once it pushes above these levels, because we've had clean range in the past here. So when price moved in this area in the past, we pushed very clean without any pullbacks and resistances and supports. Okay. And the reason is, is because if it did that in the past, there's a good chance we're going to do that in the future. Okay. So if we look at the charts, even just on the daily, right in areas where there's clean range, you likely move the same in that area in the future. So if we look at this area, clean range, clean range, clean range, same thing applies in the other way. If we look at areas where we haven't moved as cleanly, we push up, we come down, lots of wicks, lots of rejections. It's not very nice trading conditions. Whereas if we look at clean range, we can see in the past, we move really clean here, really clean here, really clean here, really clean there. Okay. Whereas if we get to down here, we can see we start forming lots of wicks, lots of rejections, and you'll see that on the lower time frames as well. If we look over here, we have some resistance. We start moving into these areas and we don't move as nicely in these areas. So we want to try and identify, first of all, where is these clean ranges in the market where we can expect high volume pushes and get those high probability trades. Okay. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is support and resistance levels or basically just market structure. So support and resistance, we don't have to do caps, excuse my spelling in advance. And this is essentially just market structure. That's all we really want to look at. Okay. And when we talk about this, all support and resistance is if we're pushing bullish and then we close bearish, we create resistance. Why? Because price failed to break above this level by closing bearish. We create resistance. Same thing. If we then continue the push, close bullish, we create support. Why? Because price failed to break below this level by closing bullish. And then we can break above that level. We break above previous resistance. This previous resistance then turns into support because we're going to have obstruction pushing down. Same with this level down here. Okay. So these are, that's our support. And this is our support. Very simple, very simple. Okay. And this is also market structure. So if we think about this market structure, we have a higher high, we come down, we create a higher low, we push up again and we create a new higher high. We come down and we create a higher low. Okay. So these levels of support and resistance is likely going to be your market structure, which is going to be your higher highs, higher lows, and if we think about bearish market, it's the exact same thing. We push down, create support because we close bullish. We failed to break below that level. Then we create resistance by closing bullish and then we continue down. So we create support down here. We create resistance up here. And then we also create that market structure where we have a lower low, a lower high, and then a lower low. Okay, so that is essentially all we want to be thinking about when we're looking at support and resistance and market structure. Is price making higher highs and higher lows? Where are the levels where we rejected and couldn't break above or below previously? So if we just quickly look at the daily over here, we can see in the past, 
It's a bit messy with this gap over here, but we're just gonna take that. That's our level of resistance because in the past we rejected that level by closing bearish, okay? And we look up here, we break above that resistance. We create new resistance up here by closing bearish, but we also create new support by rejecting that level and closing bullish over here. Okay, same thing up here. We create resistance by closing bearish and we create support by closing bullish. That's all we need to look for. And if you think about this, all we're doing, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Okay, that's all we really wanna be looking at when I'm talking about support, resistance and market structure. Okay, the last thing I wanna be looking at when I'm marking up my charts to try and identify clean ranges is higher time frame down to lower time frame. Okay, and this is also, we can talk about this in another video, this is essentially our bias, okay? When we are analyzing the markets, we can't just be on the five minute time frame unless you're a complete scalper and you see a breakout above resistance and you think price is gonna continue bullish, okay? Because there may be an hourly resistance up here, okay? And then what you're doing is trading right into that hourly resistance, right? So when we're looking at the charts and marking up, we wanna be looking at how the higher time frames, the daily, the four hour, sometimes even the weekly, correlate with the lower time frames. And then we can try and identify where these actual strong levels in the market are, where if we break above, we can continue the push. Now, I'm gonna be breaking down how you can do that in this video, so don't be too freaked out if that seems a bit complicated. So, let's get into it. We're gonna mark up on as we would for the start of the week, okay? So it's Monday here. You could even start with the monthly because we have a new monthly opening, right? So if we look at this monthly over here and we think about all these three steps over here, we can see that we had previous monthly resistance over here and we broke and closed above that level. What can we expect price to do? Just based on what we know about market structure, this month we can expect price to potentially create a pullback to create a higher low and that can be our bottom wick and then we can flip and continue bullish. What's another thing we can notice? To the left, we have clean range, right? So we're into this previous level over here, broken above that level, and now we can expect price to potentially create a pullback back to this pre previous level of support because it's now turned into support after breaking above. So it turns from resistance to support and then continue there, potentially continue bullish, okay? So, I mean, the monthly is not super important, but it's just an example. Okay, so let's start on the daily and we can look at how price is behaving. So if we look at the daily over here, first thing we can notice is that we have a daily resistance up here, okay? Why? Because we close bearish, okay? Then we can say we have daily support down here, daily support, and we also have some daily support down here, okay? So we can start thinking if we can close below these levels, we can potentially push bearish. We can start closing above these levels, we can potentially continue bullish because we're making that higher high to potentially continue, okay? Simple as that. That's all we really wanna think about when we're looking at the daily. Okay, then we can go down to the four hour and we can start seeing how price is reacting, okay? So we can adjust this a little bit because we're not gonna be trading in that little one or two pip range, okay? So we can adjust this and we can add to this. This is also a 4H, okay? So four hour resistance, okay? Then we can look to the left and we can see, okay, we have another four hour resistance up here, okay? Um, we created some nice four hour support down here, four hour support, actually we haven't, created for our support. That's my bad because this candle hasn't closed yet. Okay, so only until we get the close can we call this a support because this could, we still have an hour and a half left. This could come down, close bearish and all you have is a four hour resistance up here. Okay, so you have actually created four hour resistance but we're not gonna be trading in this range. Okay, so that's all we're really looking at. We can look at this daily level up here and we can adjust this a little bit. Okay, and this level down here is an interesting point. Okay, so this level. So we passed through this level before, okay? But it's it's still a level we need to be careful of, okay? Because the four hour rejected here previously. Okay? Even though we have clean range on the four hour, we rejected this level previously. And what I call that is a four hour watch zone, okay? So it's a level where if we have high volume, we can potentially expect price to push through like it did on this candle, but it's still a level we need to be cautious of. Okay, it's not a level we can just completely ignore, okay? 
It's the same with this level, okay, because we passed through it before. It's the same with this level over here because we passed through it before. We can see now we're seeing some rejection at this level, okay, but we passed through this level before, okay. And another thing to think about, if we look to the left, we have clean range, right? We saw in the monthly that the last time we were back here was 2008. So very long time ago. And generally when price hasn't pushed back to these levels in so long, we can expect and treat this like clean range, right? I'm pretty sure it is clean range anyway, but just for the sake of the video, when we haven't been at these levels in very long time, we can treat it like clean range, treat it like all time highs, okay? So then we look over here, we can also see some four hour levels down here. So we can make this a four hour support as well. And we can start thinking, okay, so what's happening now, right? The daily, if we look at the daily, it's very important to actually tell yourself a story. What's actually happening here, okay? Daily created a high, we rejected these levels, potentially creating a higher low, and we can expect price to continue bullish, okay? But we gotta keep in mind the monthly is just opening. Very likely we can come down and create a bottom wick. So we may just range in here for a bit before breaking above. Then we look at the four hour and we start seeing, okay, we're sort of in this range over here. We are at the top of the range. Maybe we can look at price rejecting, creating structure up here and then coming down, or we can look for breaks above here. Okay, if we start breaking below here, there's a good chance of us continuing back down to this previous four hour level, which is a watch zone. Okay, and that's a watch zone because like we see here, we've passed through that level before. Okay, so we can start building a story as we scale down to the timeframes that we wanna enter on. Okay, then we go down to, to the one hour and we can start marking up some levels up here. Okay, so we gotta think here. We have eight pips in this level up here, lots of wicks, lots of rejection. Is it worth trying to take a buy above this hourly level up here? Not really. Okay, we can mark it out. So hourly resistance, but it's not really worth trying to take buys up here. Then if we look to the left, we can see at this four hour and daily level, we have lots of rejections, right? So price failed to push above this level. We have not clean range, okay? Then if we look over here, we can start seeing, okay, we have some more levels up here an hourly resistance up here. And above this range, we have clean range, 12 pips, okay? So we can potentially look at price breaking above here to continue bullish and take more of an aggressive option for price to continue and close above this four hour level up here, okay? If we look at the hourly, we have some more support down here. We can mark this support down here uh, because we can see we have this actual resistance down here, but then we have these watch zones over here. We rejected these levels before. We can sort of just eye this and say, this is the level where if we break below, we can potentially look for sales, but we have to keep in mind, and this is the importance of bias, which we can talk about in a different video, we're very bullish, okay? Daily closed bullish, four hour, potentially closing bullish. So taking sells just off this one breakout, that's where you're likely gonna get those fake outs, okay? So as you scale down to the 30 minute now, you can start seeing, okay, we have some more clean range below here, potentially below here, we can look at some sells. 30 minute support, okay? So I have 30 minute support, clean range below there. Above here, we can see again, it's very messy. So we can move this hourly level up and add that to our 30 minute res. Okay, so we have hourly and 30 minute resistance, and then we have about 10 pips, I would assume, 10 pips up to the top there, okay? Below here, uh, below this one hour support, we have eight pips, maybe not really worth it, plus we have bullish bias. So this could maybe be a level where we try and look for pullbacks, structure to form, and then a continuation. If you guys want more sort of ideas on how to actually use these levels that can be a different video and you can also access the discord where i have a free playbook of all the setups where if you get closures below and above these levels using bias that's how you actually enter the trades but this video is more about identifying key levels okay so then we can see 30 minute we have clean range below here at least back down to this level over here where we have 20 pips down to the bottom Okay, so you can start thinking, okay, maybe we have an aggressive option down here. We can look for potential buys above here, maybe if the four hour is looking bullish. But if we now get two four hours rejecting the top of this range, okay, we can start thinking, okay, we're very likely to create a pullback, especially if we start breaking below this previous four hour levels down here. We can start thinking, okay, if we get closures below here on the 15 minute, now we can see we also have clean range and price pushed through this level quite nicely. We can at least expect price to push down to this 15 minute support down here where we can then manage risk, okay? So, but 
the much easier option is just to wait for below here where we can see we have nice clean range. There's 17 pips down to the bottom of this range. Pushed really nicely in these areas before. We can see each time we broke above here, we pushed. Each time we broke below, we pushed and filled the range. Okay, so that could be in a very attackable level. In here, very hard to try and find direction. If we then think about buys, remember we mentioned above this 30 minute and hourly level, we can now also see on the 15 minute that we have clean range. Okay, we closed above here and we pushed. And this is an area where we can look for potential buys. We have a 15 minute watch zone up here. So we can use that to manage our trade. So let's say we get a closure above here. We can look for price to create that bottom wick. We enter on the flip. And as we get to here, which is about what? Five pips, that's where we can start thinking, okay, maybe it's time to go break even because there's a good chance price could reject this 15 minute level like it did on the way back down, okay? But we can look for price to con potentially continue bullish to get that nice flip and continue bullish. Okay, we can adjust this four hour level up here as, as well, 15 minute level. Okay, so now we have a real picture starting to form on what we can start thinking about doing as price is forming for the London session. Okay, that's one other thing we need to mention is trading times, right? So if we trade with low volume in bad sessions, very good chance we're gonna get like these moves where we fake out and sort of liquidity grab. So key thing for me is 130 EST to about 330 EST for London and then about 730 EST to 10 EST for New York. Okay, so that's the times we wanna be looking for these breakouts. That's the times where we're gonna get these high volume pushes to break out and continue above these levels. Okay, so that's just an extra thing that we need to take note of. Okay, so now let's start building a picture of what we can expect price to do. So sells below here, if I was trading, I wouldn't really be too excited about it. Okay, I would much rather wait for sales below this level. Okay, because we have clean range, we'll have that nice four hour bearish close, potentially continue down further. Okay, then we can look for more sales potentially below this level where we have some 15 minute support and we can use this previous daily level and four hour level to potentially come down. We have eight pips below there. Okay, so you can have more sales below here and this is closures, right? We don't wanna just see price come down. We wanna see a closure below this level on whatever time frame it is that you're entering. Okay, so you can have sales below here and then you can look to manage as you push to this, this daily and four hour level down here to potentially continue down further, okay? There could be more sell opportunities as you start breaking below these levels back down to this 15 minute level over here. So if you look at the 30 minute, you have clean range in this level as well. Hourly, clean range as well. Okay, so you have a nice clean range below these levels where we can potentially expect price to continue down. Okay, and you can just keep doing that as price continues to push, but right now we're all the way up here. So we're not too concerned about that. Okay, now let's think about buys. So we can have an aggressive option. We don't wanna be trading in tier. Why? Because we have not clean range. We have lots of resistances. Price is gonna break above here. It's very likely to get caught up in all these levels. It's very likely to end up looking like this and you're gonna get liquidity grab and not gonna be very fun. So you can have an aggressive buy option above here. And the reason I say aggressive is because it is quite aggressive, right? You haven't broken above this four hour resistance, but there is a good chance, a very good chance, if you close above this previous resistance, you can at least continue bullish up to these levels. So as you start pushing to this 15 minute watch zone and this four hour and 15 minute resistance, you can start managing your position, go break even or potentially just close, okay? And then you're gonna have very easy buys above here, okay? Simple closure above, you have clean range to the left. You can expect price, if you're in those session times, to continue the momentum, you get the breakout, get the flip, break of the high, you can look to enter as you break these highs over here, stop loss below the previous candle, and you're gonna get your nice trade continuation, okay? Very simple. So yeah, those are the levels where, I mean, going into today, I'm gonna be looking at, Buys above here, potential aggressive option above here. In this range, very messy, right? If we look at this 15 minute, look how messy this is. Okay, you can quite literally see this range, how dirty it is. But if we start getting below here, which was our potential sell, we're clearing up. Below here, we're even more clear. Okay, so we can see we moved clean, 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 clean. Very good chance if we get below here, we can continue bearish, okay? 
And obviously it's a bit different because we are, are at pretty much all time highs or pre Brexit all time highs, but you'd be doing the exact same with the buy side. Okay. If you had levels up here, but you obviously don't. Okay. So you, if you had resistance up here, you just keep doing what you were doing with the sell levels. So yeah, that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Really hope you find some value from that level. It may look confusing just looking at price like this, looking at price like this, but breaking it down from the higher time frames all the way down to the lower time frames. I really hope you guys can see how every line on here makes sense and tells us more about what's actually happening. Okay. Obviously, if you look at the daily, it looks like a bit of a mess, but it's actually very simple, right? All we're trying to identify is where are the levels where if we break above based on these three things we talked about, which was if we can find it, which was clean range, market structure, and using the higher time frames down to the lower time frames, we have a good chance of continuing down. So, I mean, here's a free session plan for all of you guys for today. For GJ, hope you guys enjoy it. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll see you guys soon.